Amen. If you have your Bibles with you this morning, we'd ask you to turn to 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And we're going to begin reading in the very first verse. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. In the first verse, the Bible says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, from, as from us, as the day of Christ is at hand. Let, man, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there become a falling away first, and the Son of Man be revealed, the Son of Perdition, who opposeth and exalt, exalteth himself above all that is called God, or all that is worshipped, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, shewing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was with you, I told you these things, and now you know what withholdeth that you might, that he may be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doeth already work, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Dear Lord, we thank you and praise you for a place to preach this morning. We thank you for this word. Lord, we thank you for the efforts that people made to come out to be with you this morning. God, we pray that we would be blessed. Lord, that you would uh, uh, grant us a hearing from you, Lord, that we might be stirred up better to your service. And we pray these things in the sweet and the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now, uh, fairly familiar verses of Scripture, uh, Paul writing the second time to the church at Thessalonica uh, to remind them very simply that the Lord was coming. And uh, we need that reminder. And if you think about there was probably not a lot of time between these two writings, and they needed reminded again. And he even says, I've already told you, so that means on his mission trip, he told them as well. When he first met uh, at the Thessalonican people and he preached to them and they were saved and God established a church, that he told them then the time is coming for Christ to return, and yet we see him remind them of that on two separate occasions. Now, uh, a lot of people would see that as threatening, but listen, the fact that Christ's coming is good news. Amen. It, it is not a threatening thing to me, but it makes my heart to rejoice to know that very soon that I will be home with the Lord Jesus Christ. The, the threatening peace is those who remain in their sin. Mm -hmm. The threatening peace belongs to those that the Lord has never, uh, never brought to newness of life. And so we see that in uh, being led by the Lord that Paul thought it important one more time to review the coming of Christ. So in the first verse, he says, Now we beseech you or beg you, brethren. Now, he was addressing the church. He was addressing saved folks, brethren, sisters in Christ, the church at Thessalonica. This is applicable to you. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, one thing, and by the gathering of and by our gathering together unto him. So he really is making two predictions or reminding them of two coming events, and that is the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and the gathering together of God's people to himself, two, two almost simultaneous but yet separate events. 
Now, when our Lord Jesus Christ comes the first time, he'll not make touchdown, but he'll stand in glory and say, it's enough, come up here. And we'll go to be with him, and he'll be visible, and he'll be uh, to his people, and we will be at home with him. And then there'll be seven very difficult years that are set aside for the for the for the damned to the to the uh, uh, to the people who do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, to those who have not been born again. So he he makes note of these two things. Then he gives them the first warning that you be not soon shaken in mind. Uh. Now, uh, very very particular words. Because he didn't say not to be shaken in spirit, in your soul. He says, don't be shaken up here. Yeah. Don't, don't be fooled by what you see here and all that's going on around you. Don't be shaken in mind. Now, that, that is a wholesome reminder for those of us who are redeemed. Uh, it shows again that we cannot be shaken in soul. That, that, that inward man, that, that soul of man is solidly redeemed and there, there's no shaking it, but we certainly can get a hold of this world and be shaken in mind and get troubled and start wringing our hands and wondering what's next. Next, But I want you to see that, uh, that Paul didn't want the church at Thessalonica that way and the Lord Jesus Christ don't want New Testament Baptist Church to be that way. He wants us to understand the things as they come to pass. Now, Paul is going to get very specific in what is going to occur so the church at Thessalonica wouldn't get tore up, that they wouldn't be discouraged. And they wouldn't be alarmed when they saw these things begin to transpire because they already knew about it. That you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled. Now, there is where the devil would have you this morning is to be troubled. And you know, it's sometimes the most simplistic things. Uh, just like Sarah and Adam's car being low on air in their tires. You know, that's the very type of thing that the devil will use to tear sure. you up. Something so simplistic. But the way that we are and the way that humankind is, is, is geared, that's the thing that troubles us the most. And he says, I don't want you to be troubled. Uh, you ever get troubled about something and just tore up, is what my mother used to say. Um... Uh, it's very consuming, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And that's how the devil likes it. Uh, we'll get down in a minute uh, and, and see that Satan is the origin of this. But when we can't focus on Christ, we're going to be troubled. We're going to be tore up. We're going to be discouraged. We're going to be uh, not sure what is next. So I want you to see that Paul did not want the church at Thessalonica to be tore up all the time, but rather to be centered on Christ. He says, I don't want you to be troubled up, uh, I don't, uh, troubled in mind or spirit. Now again, I want you to see the little S spirit, not meaning the inner, that little S spirit, meaning how we present. You, you know, you've heard those saying, oh, he has a foul spirit. Uh, that means how you present to others. You know, we need to be very conscious of that, do we not? Very conscious of how our presentation is yeah. to people we know and to people we don't know. When you introduce yourself, when, when you're being looked at by, upon others, meeting another pastor or brother at our meeting Friday night, and talk, talk about the increased pressure on preacher kids. And I'm sure Adam and Sarah and Bella could all tell you you're scrutinized. You're, you're looked at very carefully far above the average kid. And, and it, it always has some kind of impact on them. And you can tell when that foul spirit and someone's looking you up and down and coming up with all their criticism. Now that's avoidable if you just depend on Christ. But in the day in which we live, and in the day of the coming of Christ, if you want a calm spirit, if you want to be relaxed, if you want to be presenting well to others, focus on Christ and not what you see. 
Then he says, nor by word. Now, uh, what does that mean? I mean, everybody's got to talk and everybody's got to listen by word. Well, think about all the falsehoods. Uh, even Paul addressed some of them. He says, there's some that say the coming of Christ is already past. And he said, believe it not. Right. Uh, see, you're going to hear more falsehoods than you are truth. You're going to hear more things about how easy it is than how difficult really the times of the last days will be. You're going to hear more things, well, before it gets re real bad, we'll be out of here. Well, as we get deeper into this scripture, we'll find that that's not true. Uh, that, that, that's a false bomb that's been given to so-called Baptist churches for many years. But we'll say that, we're, we'll see in a moment, we're going to get so close that we'll know who he is. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and so in that time that's coming, yes, it's going, to be, it's going to be a difficult time. And the only balm for that in the difficult time is to be focused on this. So don't, when, when people say, oh, Jesus is not real, don't be discouraged by the word, nor by letter as from us. Now, if, if you underline in your Bible, underline that, nor by letter as from us. Because 13 books of the New Testament are letters by Paul to different places, different churches he had visited along his way. And uh, it, uh, Jared, uh, Brother Jarrett mentioned a copy of one of them, uh, Good News for, I can't remember the name of the last Modern, uh, modern Man. Thank you. Uh, you know what that is? That's a letter, is it not? He said, don't you be troubled by that. Uh, what about the, the Bible that Jeho the Jehovah's Witnesses use? It's just a letter. Don't be troubled by that. Don't be, don't be upset by that. Uh, they're coming. They were predicted. You know, I remember when that first started, all that, some of that stuff just started, first started. And, and the first false Bible I seen was the one that the Russellites run. And they tried to get mother could buy a copy and I'd never quite seen mom like that and any to, needless to say she didn't take her money and, and give it to them but that's a letter and you know what people will come and try to cram that down your throat the book of mormon perfect example mm -hmm. don't be discouraged by their letters you know what they're wrong and not only do we just need to stand in the fact that that's wrong Paul told us they were coming. And, and, and the purpose of every false letter is to question whom God is and whom Christ is. That, that's their purpose, and, and they're very effective, effective at it. So don't be discouraged. Don't be tore up about that. Those things are going to come to pass. Then he says... As the day of Christ is at hand. Now, a lot of people will take this and say, see, it never happened. Or you have the flip side and you have people see, it already has happened. Now, no more than Paul than I can, can get the timetable of Christ, but he saw what was going on and even then he saw things were getting bad. Now we, here we are 1,900 years later, and you know what? Things are worse still than they are now, and the very fact that he said it's, it's at hand, it's even closer now. Uh, we, we should behave every day like this could be it. This could be, this could be the very sunrise that will bring in Christ the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and, and that we may see him on that very day. And, and if we go with that mindset, you know, there's very little that are troubling you. Now, it's one thing, and it, and it does, it's one thing to uh, give you a spirit of evangelism when you think about the nearness of Christ, but it's quite the other of the peace that it brings. Things literally falling apart around you, and, and you look toward the east and say, hey, it could be today. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it, it might be before lunchtime. What a glorious and glorious, wonderful thing. And we forget that very frequently, and it certainly is uh, the devil's effort to, to get us to forget that. But I want you to see that the reality is that it could happen. It's at hand. Verse 3, and this is always the great deceiver. Let no man deceive you. And they will make that effort, and they will be doing that. Let no man deceive you by any means. Now, I want you to see that uh, uh, the word means there, plural, more than one. And when they find ancient tablets, supposedly older than any that's ever been found, you know what? That doesn't give them any more authority than anything else. But people, oh man, if that's older, it must be better. Well, I've not found that to be true. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And so we see that uh, there are a great many different methods or ways or means that they're going to come to you. And they're going to say, this is what the Bible really says. I know it's said by grace, but really that was a, uh, a translation error. Uh, Brother Jared's been doing a good job on referencing the Old Testament. Uh, Church of Christ people, not only do they reject it, they get angry when you bring it up. And you know, that that passage in Isaiah that you read, you know why? Uh, You know why they don't like it? There's no mention of water baptism. See, there's lots of means out there in it. You ever think about the founder of the Mormon church? Supposedly, in a cave, he found these tablets with a language written that only he could understand. And no one ever saw the tablets. He burned them up after he, after he saw them and translated them into English. And he had this language translation ability as a gift of God. You know what that is? It's nothing more than another means. Uh, another method, another way. And he says, don't... Uh, be aware of these deceiving methods. Another deceiving method every day we pick these up and you know we look at it and, and, and take it as gospel truth. This is a means to deceive you. Right? And, and, and so we see that we have to be very cautious, we have to be very careful because there's lots of methods out there to be deceived by. For that day shall not come. Now you want a timeline? Here we have the beginning of a timeline. Except, uh, except there come, except there come a falling away first. So one thing that we're going to see before the coming of Christ is a great falling away of the Lord's people. Now, in my own experiencing experience and having preach now for over 25 years, I have found this to be true. Uh, me and Don, the kids, when we used to go up north, uh, uh, there's a home Baptist church up there, Mount Morris, Michigan. And, and that sanctuary probably will seat probably three or 400 people. I've seen it packed out and with, with, with people standing in the back. You know what? You don't see that anymore. And you know why? Because the great falling away is occurring. Look around our building. There's 12 or 13 of us. You know why? It's not because that, that, uh, that God is trying to discourage us. It's a signal. It, it's that, oh, I know what's happening. Uh, the falling away is beginning to occur. We live in a very small town, and I, I didn't realize how small until I, I spent uh, uh, a little bit with... Uh, Brother David, and he t- and he kept mentioning how small Dover was. And I thought, well, I should take you to Cumberland City, uh, and uh, uh, but we really do. So when you look at the smallness of Dover in Stewart County, you know what? This is not too bad, right? right. Because we're experiencing the great falling away. 
Uh, we, we are enduring that. So we see the first signal that Paul gives us as he's writing to the church at Thessalonica. We're beginning to perceive. We're beginning to see. Let no man deceive you by any means, the different ways they do that, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And that has happened. The son of perdition. And, excuse me, and, and the man of sin revealed the son of perdition. So we find here something very humbling, and I, ha I, have, uh, I have it noted in my Bible. Uh, somebody says that uh, apparently I heard a sermon uh, one time that this was Judas. No, this is not Judas. This is the Antichrist. And the reason I say this, by the time this church letter was written, everyone knew who Judas was. They already knew that. So this son of perdition is someone else. It is the Antichrist. It is the man. So as we're looking about it, we're easy to criticize it, and, and, and we stay on our phones all the time, look, look, look for the son of perdition. He's coming. I, I wasn't so sure when this last pope came in to being that he wasn't the son of perdition. And I do think he, he, he is the son of perdition's prophet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you, know, uh, you know that man was the only second man in the history of the Catholic Church? The pope in front of him, that was the only, the only the second time ever a pope had stepped down. The rest of them lived the entirety of their office. And he stepped down. This man came in. Now the Sodomites, the Sodomites have free reign in the Catholic Church. You see, it, it's very significant. And, and so we see another thing that sometimes has been mistaught is that we won't know who the Antichrist is. Dear friend, we will. We, we will recognize him. And you know, th this is the reality of that. Just like in the days of Christ, no one will listen. If we say, that's him, they'll laugh you to scorn. We're not, we're not going to be going, and everybody going, oh, all right, well, I better get my house in order. No, no. Uh, we'll be laughed, we'll be, we'll be made to mockery. Mm -hmm. But now, the joy is this, we'll know him. <laughs> you know what? If you got company coming, you clean up your house, don't you? <laughs> And uh, we know Jesus is coming back, and we see the son of perdition revealed. Hey, that's exciting news, isn't it? Uh, you know, uh, we get we get caught up locally, and by that I mean the United States. We we always look to our presidential election and uh, things like that that happen in our realm. Look to the Middle East. Look to Israel. Look at that news area. Uh, or the son of perdition. Don't don't look here. And and so we find we find here that uh, Paul wrote, "You're going to know who he is." Here's some symptoms, some signs, some indication. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God. Now, this could be a number of things, really, but I want you to see he's going to be so blasphemous, he'll say, I know more than God. That God isn't even real. How much have we heard that recently? Our former president, President Barack Obama, who took the pledge of Devotion to our country on the Quran. It was not the Bible. Hmm. You think that's any 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 kind of accident? Mm -hmm. Certainly not. You know where his origin is? You know who's playing the puppet strings right now? See, these things are very real, and we sit in dumbness and either willfully or or, or maybe not, maybe just ignorance, and we don't even see them coming. But Paul said we could know. We, we could understand. We could be watching. And, and certainly
certainly we should. And, and so we see that this individual will think that he is better than God and that he knows better than God and he'll want to be worshipped. Uh, you know, that's one reason the Catholic Church is what it is. They literally worship the Pope. I mean, they'll bow before him and they'll throw things before him and they worship him as unto a god. And again, that's going to be very closely related. Watch the Catholic Church. She, she, she's a good indicator of last time prophecy. Now, uh, he'll ride in on that wing. Watch around us, the Church of England, or the Episcopalians, uh, Methodists, Presbyterians, they're all going home. They, more, they look like mother more every day. And, and they will be included in that as well. And, and we just simply got to guide our vision. And instead of being discouraged by these things, be excited. Be, be understanding, hey, if, if you see them kneeling behind, by a political leader and giving him all, listen, don't go bang your head against the wall. The time of coming is even now as we speak. Glorify God. Look away from that mess and say, oh, yeah, uh, it, it's, you know, I'm looking at the clock right now. It's 22 minutes till. And when you see that mess, say, oh, it's five minutes till. <laughs> it, it, it's about time to go. And uh, it would be a very encouraging time. No, another thing to the end of that verse, shooing himself that he is God. Now, I personally believe this will be the Antichrist. This will be Satan incarnate. You know, everything that God Jehovah does, the devil wants to replicate. Yeah, that's right. And the living Lord Jesus Christ was, was the very God in flesh, Jehovah incarnate, and the devil is going to replicate that in the person of the Antichrist. And you know what? We ought to be able to see him. We ought to be able to look upon him and say, that's him. I knew he was coming, and there he is. I knew it was going to happen, and there he is. So when we begin to look at this, look at the man that said, and notice he said the context of that says, there is no God, but he wants to be worshipped as God. In other words, this individual will say, I am your God. That's what he'll want. That's the, that's, the, that's the amount of worship that he desires. And then when you begin to see that, hey, it's coming. Verse 5, he says, Remember you not when I was with you? I told you these things. Already had went once through it before. And he said, I'm reminding you. I told you exactly how it would be. Verse 6, And now ye know what withholdeth that might be revealed in his time. And certainly the, the church at Thessalonica and, and us even today, then immediate response is, what's keeping it from happening? Right? <laughs> well, so far, I've never seen anybody say, I am God. Muhammad, at his death, he says, I don't even understand what the purpose of life is. He didn't say, I'm God. He was worshipped as a God. But he didn't say, I'm God. <laughs> he knew how little and finite man was at the end of his life. And so it wasn't him. And he's not, he's not appeared on the scene yet. Now, I think he's probably living. He probably can be as old as I am. <laughs> but, uh, but, Again, I don't know because we've not had the individual rise and say, I am God. Then he says that it's going to be held back for a while. He says, the mis uh, verse 7, for the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he will now, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Now, 
I personally believe the one that now letteth or allows really prevents is the Holy Ghost. And he's, he's holding things back until he pulls it away. You know, uh, any part of the Godhead can remove himself at will. That's because he's sovereign. Now, I don't know what had happened. I don't know if it's a full removal. I can't imagine a miserable life without the Holy Ghost, can you? But is he going to withdraw himself altogether? Is he just going to withdraw himself? And we see the havoc that comes after that, but we will be encouraged. I don't know. But I do know this when it's root. When the Holy Spirit shows up no longer, that's another indication. Right. And apparently we're here. So when you go to the service, you read your Bible, and you just don't feel any presence at all. Most of us look within ourselves intuitively, don't we? I've got sin somewhere, which is which is a a bright a bright idea most of the time. But maybe at the end we're not going to have that blessing anymore. I don't know, but I do know <laughs> the more sinful this world gets the more difficult to fill the presence of the Lord. Verse 8. And then, when all this happens previously, and then shall that wicked be revealed. When there's no more constraints on him by the Holy Ghost, then the wicked one, Satan himself, he shall be revealed, whom the Lord shall co consume with the Spirit of of his mouth. Now, when we get so discouraged and we get so frightened and we get so upset, you remember this, that the very person of Satan is consumed by the word of God. The very thing that we hold in our lap, the very thing that we carry under our arm, it is the consuming factor of Satan himself. What an amazing thing. That'll make you want to keep it close to your heart. You know, as Paul was writing in one of the churches, he says, he says, hold that thing, hold those things near your heart. And that's exactly what he was talking about. You know uh, what can discourage you? When, I mean, what can encourage you? Even when you're not hearing from the Holy Ghost, that book that you have right there in your lap, the stuff that you've committed to memory. He said, don't be discouraged. Just the Word of God. The word, the spoken word of God by Christ himself consumes Satan in a moment. And then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. So we see Satan revealed very obviously, and then we see the Lord coming in the brightness of his coming. Uh, we see uh, we see the wicked one revealed in verse eight, seven or eight, and in nine we see Jesus on the scene calling us home in His glory and who He is. And then shall that wicked one be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of His mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of His coming, even Him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all powers and signs and wonders. Now, we see another thing that he reminds us to look for. Powers. You ever look and see these big places that they call churches that uh, have to keep adding on to their parking lot and just huge, big old buildings? Watch that. Now, don't be discouraged by it, but watch it. See, because there's going to be deception by, by people doing things like that. Now, uh, they may not be here, but people, a person that will be so captivated. Now, I personally don't think our president 
is very captivating man. Do you? So I don't, I don't think it will be him. I, I don't think he'll even be an American. But I want you to see that whomever it will, look to their personality. He's not going to be a mean person. He's going to be charismatic. He's going to be somebody like, you know, I really like that guy. Mm-hmm. And that's someone that, that, that just had, you know, how mother used to say, just has a way about him. That's going to be this individual. Look for that. Huh. It says, so he'll have huh, all power and signs. I mean, people love signs, don't they? Uh, they have to look at things. Oh, I know what that means. Pentecostals are really big on that. They'll probably get what they want. They'll be signs. People read the stars. That's a sign. People look at the zodiac. That's a sign. And all these individual things will add up and we'll be able to say that's him. Lying wonders. Verse 10. With all deceivableness of unrighteousness. Now God's people typically, if they're genuinely saved, they like righteous things. But I want you to see this individual will run in on on deceivable unrighteousness. Getting laws passed so that men can marry men and women can marry women and call it good. See, it's deceivable. And people are just clapping their hands because it occurred. Does that sound familiar to you? It does to me. Am I discouraged? No, I'm excited. That means it's near. That means my Lord is very close to his coming. And, and we see as Paul is writing at the, to the church at Thessalonica, he reminds them these things are coming to pass. Be ready. Notice why. Because they received not the love of truth that they might be saved. Do you love this book? Boy, I do. I was tore up a few hours ago because just my copy was among the missing. Do you like what it teaches? I know you do. It's a hallmark of the redeemed. But you know what? There's more people than you that hate this book than love. There's very many people that despise the teachings of this book because that makes it one God, one true church, one Savior, and not many, many, many more. (laughs) Remember the King of Israel uh, brought all the pagan gods into the house of the Lord. See, that's what the world wants, that every God be accepted. And you know, even under the umbrella of Christianity, they want the, they want the Catholics to be okay. They want the Methodists to be okay. They want you and I to be okay. They want the Mormons all to be grouped together. Listen, we're not. We're not. And we need to stand for that. Right. And the only way that you really will see the Antichrist is have your antenna. Have your antenna raised. Yeah. And you'll see, you'll understand and know who he is. Yeah. Keep spreading the gospel. Don't give up. Look unto Christ. If you're not saved, claim. Cry out to him. Cry out to him. Uh, we're in a very difficult time, church. Yeah. But take it for what it is. You know, if a uh, if we saw on the weather a uh, big storm coming from the west, we'd prepare, would we not? That's right. If it was a winter storm, we'd bring wood in the house. We'd prepare. If it was tornadoes, we'd go to the safe spot in our house. Now, if you live in a double wide like me and Jared, you may not have a safe spot. You just have to depend on grace. 
Uh, but we make preparations with them. Right. Why would we not, with the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ so near, trust Him? You know, sometimes sovereign grace people almost make salvation complicated. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Man. How simple. How easy. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. Yeah.